The Zumwalt Prairie is a magical place in winter. Snow drifts pile up and disappear, transforming the landscape by the minute. 30 seconds ago, you couldn't see anything. I was just seeing if I could find any animals, because usually if you find animals, then you can find the people. <laughs> But not just any animals or people. Tyler Houck is looking for elk and the people who hunt them. Morning. Good morning. See any animals? Tyler patrols the Zumwalt Prairie for the Nature Conservancy. Head up here, and as it turns left, go up that canyon. Counter to what you might expect, though, his job is not to keep hunters out of the nonprofit's nature preserve. It's to help them find elk inside of it. A lot of times there's animals on the back side of that ridge. They're pretty used to being pushed around, and yeah. they're definitely going to go to the hardest to get two spots. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Right. Good luck, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yep. By late December, hundreds of hunters have been trekking across the Zumwalt for more than four months, both on the Conservancy's preserve and the surrounding private property. That makes it one of Oregon's longest hunting seasons and the state's largest on private land. The Zumwalt hunts aren't necessarily about killing elk. It's mostly about keeping the elk moved around and kind of instilling in them that they have to go from place to place to place. The idea that an environmental organization would invite in hunters to manage elk might seem surprising, but it's just one way people on seemingly different sides of the fence line have learned to work together on the Zumwalt. And like many stories, it begins in the springtime. Chad Dotson oversees the Nature Conservancy's elk management programs on the Zumwalt Preserve. Uh, right now I'm looking at a group of elk. They spend a lot of their time in the spring and the summer up here on the prairie. We could see anywhere from 50 head to 500 head. What looked to be a small group turns out to be the vanguard of a herd that goes on and on. Midway through, Chad sees a calf get stuck in the fence. Looks like it has a front leg hung in the wire. Chad sets off to see if he can help the calf. It manages to free itself. But it's the first hint of the struggles that arise when wildlife and humans collide. And those struggles have grown in recent years. For decades, elk migrated across the Zumwalt in small numbers. But starting at the turn of the century, the population rocketed to nearly 4,000 animals. And the elk began to gather year-round in giant herds that took a toll on the land. When this huge influx of elk decided to call the prairie home, it was devastating to the aspen. They eat all the small ones and they rub their antlers on the big ones, and an aspen is just like candy to an elk. They love it. Those disappearing aspen and shrub stands provided essential habitat for birds, pollinators, and mammals. So the Nature Conservancy spent more than $100,000 building dozens of large protective fences to keep the elk out. But it's not just aspen and shrubs that elk like to eat. The Nature Conservancy has long collaborated with neighboring ranchers, leasing preserve land for cattle and conducting research to confirm that well-managed grazing is compatible with a healthy grassland. We have a program with the TNC where they allow my cattle to graze on their land uh, for a sh period of time. That gives me the ability to rest a pasture of mine that I might have to graze otherwise. Elk, of course, are more than happy to eat the grass ranchers are saving for their livestock. So as the elk population grew, so did the outcry from ranch owners. They were damaging a lot of our soils. If you look here, all of these black spots, that's caused by elk hoof prints when the ground is really soft in March and April, before any livestock ever shows up on the Zumwalt. And that grass will die. To see so many elk on the Zumwalt is all the more amazing because they were almost wiped out statewide by settlers. And this region played a special role in their recovery. By the early 1900s, elk numbers were so low that Oregon banned elk hunting for decades. Then in 1912, the state's first game warden hatched a wild plan. 
he would transplant 15 elk from Wyoming to Northeast Oregon. Huge crowds turned out in each town to watch the caravan make its journey by train, wagon, and even sleigh to a fenced meadow north of the Zumwalt. For years, newspapers covered the elk like celebrities as their offspring were sent to help reseed the rest of Oregon. As elk rebounded locally, the forests and canyons neighboring the Zumwalt became popular hunting destinations. And now it's this hunting pressure combined with an increase in predators that are helping to push thousands of elk onto the prairie in recent years. Elk are naturally a prairie animal. So once they made it out here and there was no more pressure, they found it to their liking. The hunting pressure was much lower because it was private property and the, and the population soared at that point. Then the collaborative effort began to try to solve this elk issue. First they tried hazing, or gently pushing the elk off the prairie by foot, horse, and vehicle. We had a few elk up on the butte. We'll get over closer to those where we can get a little better look. Craig Nichols filmed his years as a professional elk herder. We got him right on the end here. Something's going to have to give here pretty shortly. Turns out elk herd about as well as cats. Holy cow. This bunch is headed back the other direction. That didn't work very good. Wow, what a stampede. Boy, when they decide to go, I mean, they are gone. We're done pushing them for today, I can guarantee you that. When hazing didn't work, the Zumwalt ranch owners asked the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife to start hunting seasons to reduce and move the herds off the prairie. But for it to work, most of the dozens of landowners, including the Nature Conservancy, would need to allow hunters onto their properties to avoid creating new, smaller refuges. It's important for the Nature Conservancy to cooperate with our neighbors. Um, you know, they're stewards of the land just like we are. The state now offers nearly 1,000 cow elk tags on the Zumwalt in seasons running August through January. The Nature Conservancy takes about a third of those hunters. Kyle Petrosini drew a tag for late December. By this time, the elk mostly avoid the open prairie, so he and his friend Aaron Maxwell decide to search the canyons along its edges. I've been hunting for about seven years, probably, as I got more interested in where my food comes from, I became more drawn to experiencing what it's like to hunt game and go after animals from the wild. But yeah, there should be quite a few needles out in this haystack. Go for a hike. Hiking into one of the canyons, they discover their first tracks. Damn. They're so fresh, we can still smell the elk. Maybe we spooked them up. They probably heard us up higher. And they were in here, maybe. And it looks like they're all been crossing and going out up there. Yeah, well, yeah. Just right there. yeah, let's do that. That's a good idea. Hunting season is the only time the public has almost free reign to explore the entire Zumwalt Preserve. And that engagement is a goal in itself for the Nature Conservancy. You got a license for that, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the bigger How's elk going, management man? goals, however, Great. the Nature Conservancy looks to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Well, we have an elk down that we chase. OK, chase yep. So if you have an elk down, you can walk through there, no problem. Okay. The state agency's long-term plan is to reduce the spring elk population on the Zumwalt to 700 animals. Not because elk don't belong, but because in this modern world, elk aren't the only players. Ranchers also get a say. Management objectives are not the carrying capacity of the land necessarily. I mean, that's, part, that's partly taken into consideration, of course, but more realistically, people decide this is basically what we can tolerate. And it is an experiment. And if it doesn't work, we're gonna have to come up with some other way of trying to achieve that goal. Just as elk aren't interested in paying attention to property lines, this field experiment has revealed that people too aren't so easily fenced in. 
Well, this is a collection of antlers that we've harvested over the years, as well as collect these on our property year after year. And at Christmas time, we tried to make a little Christmas tree out of it. Perhaps it should be no surprise then that the few Zumwalt landowners who oppose the hunting program are themselves hunters. They're magnificent animals. They're amazing, they're majestic, um, and they taste great. (laughs) Tammy Jackson and other critics oppose the high number of hunters, citing instances of trespassing, abandoned animals, and other hunting violations. But their primary fear is that the long seasons lasting well into winter could decimate the herd. They need time to put on fat and meat so that they can survive these harsh winters that the Zumwalt Prairie has. And if they're pressured continuously, that doesn't happen. State wildlife officials say there's no current risk of the herd dropping below targeted levels. But in response to concerns like Tammy's, the Nature Conservancy has agreed to cap how many hunters it allows on the preserve. They have worked with us really well. I know they're in a tough spot. With the hunting program, the Nature Conservancy is trying to find a balance that works both for its neighbors and for the environmental health of the Zumwalt Prairie as a whole. The elk numbers have decreased on the Upland Prairie. It's definitely uh, still a work in progress. But our aspen stands are doing better. They're coming back and, and we are seeing a difference. One sign that the program is succeeding in dispersing the elk is that people no longer see the giant herds that they saw during the peak. Right in the draw. You see him? That could be a hunt. In fact, Kyle and Aaron have been hiking all day, but have only managed to see four bulls. I was hoping that there would be some cows in that group, but antlers on all four of them. We can just look and admire the bulls, but, but we're looking for a cow. Turns out, the closest they'll come to a cow... Right there. <sighs> ...is the moo variety. It's awesome. But they're okay with that. It was really neat to learn that the Nature Conservancy um, yeah, allowed people access onto this preserve to hunt. But it makes perfect sense. We're part of the system, and uh, so it makes sense to provide access for humans into this landscape. 